be it paintings or novels or architecture. You know, there's always a, the minority, the great, ma great majority falls away, and there is a small slice mm -hmm. of art that stays. And every generation has its own slice. So I always uh, say to film students, uh, we wouldn't know anything about the 18th century if it wasn't for the novels mm -hmm. and the painters and the architecture and the music, the composers. So it's the artists that represent any generation always in the first instance, before we look at the battles and the wars and the politics. And Definitely. I think this will be true for, uh, for, all, for, for the future. I mean, in 50 years, if somebody wanted to get a, a feeling for the 20th century, Look at Ingmar Bergman, at Stanley Kubrick, at, 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 at Carla Saura, at Edgar Reitz, at all these great artists and you get a real insight into um, that century because film has become the latest art form uh, that is now recognized as such. Um, the fact that most films will disappear, well, doesn't matter. Yeah, most buildings disappear, most, most paintings disappear, most written material disappears. It's always the top end, the top quality, and that stands for each generation, and each generation has it. And right now, I meet young people and in film schools, and I know I've, I don't have to worry. We will get great films in the next 20 years, and they will also be in that category of great art. Since you mentioned Bergman, I have to ask you, maybe it's a private question, but what is your favorite Bergman's movie? Since mine is Persona, I think that that's one of the best yes, movies. This is Persona. Yeah. It's a wonderful film. Oh, I have many great. I love, love Heimat by Edgar Wright's wonderful film. I like uh, Les Enfants du Paradis, uh, Marcel Carnet. Um, uh, one of my favorite film, Dr. Strangelove, 2001 yeah. by Kubrick. Eyes Wide Shut, we mentioned yeah, already. We mentioned it. Um, I like Fanny and Alexander, a wonderful film by Ingmar Bergman. Um, and uh, so, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, a lot of them. It's a lot of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, whenever somebody uh, wants to collaborate with you and wants you to produce his or, or her movie, what decides whether you want or, or don't want to, to I'm too be old producer? now. No, you are not. I'm, no, I'm too old now. Now, I, I, I have been asked twice already. I now work with students at film schools. I have seven grandchildren. Mm -hmm. They need my time. I'm 77 years old, you know, and, and I'm not a director. I'm not an artist. It's something else. I am somebody who, who has to then work 14 hours a day, seven days a week. It is a constant battle. I'm too old for, to do the job that I used to do. But when you were active in, in filmmaking, oh, then, was, what I, decided whether you want or don't want to, I, I, to produce it? I didn't decide it. I worked with Kubrick at that time. Mm -hmm. And I worked for as long as I enjoyed that very, very much. Um, I worked with him and then after Kubrick died, I made uh, two documentaries for Warner Brothers. I made some documentaries for schools. I made a film about the Dvorak Cello Concerto. And more and more, I work at film schools. I'm, I'm a guest teacher at, film, at many different film schools and um, I enjoy that because I like to work with young people and um, so this is now a, a very good and, and satisfying task for what I would call the last chapter in my life. <laughs> well, don't, yeah? don't call it yeah. like that. Uh, well, uh, can you tell me uh, what do you find uh, the most important about uh, a film? Is it a plot? Is it a screenplay? Is it a, a director, uh, actors? What is the most important thing? The most important thing is that the director is in love. With filmmaking. In love with a story, in love with a project. So, because there's no no easier answer to your question. Mm -hmm. It's a complex question. So of course it is a story. It's a script. Yeah, and it has to be a, a script the director loves to do. Uh, and out of this passion comes then the careful selection of all the elements, the actors, the setting, the, uh, everything else. But it has to be driven by this passion and this love for doing the story a good service. And uh, this is how I learned it, this is what I know. 
I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is, uh, could possibly be ridiculed in an in a, in a everyday, you know, uh, manufacturing type filmmaking. I don't know anything about this. I only know this. And uh, I have only worked with somebody who, where, where this is absolutely true. Tremendous care, take your time, don't rush, get it right, satisfy yourself. And um, yeah, and then afterwards you can be proud of it. Kubrick loved his own films. He never looked back, but you know, he was satisfied with what he did. And this is not easy. Not easy if you are so demanding yeah. on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So uh, you mentioned uh, Drashko Jurovic, Montenegrin director. Uh, are you familiar with uh, cinematography from Balkans? From who? Balkans, from this part uh, of not, Europe. Not, I, I saw this uh, uh, film by Drasko, which I was beautifully done. Very, have you? Do you know it? Mm -hmm, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's yes, excellent. No, but I, I can't say I'm familiar with, with the Balkan products, no. Not at all. I mean, I have been um, to film festivals in, in Kosovo and in Skopje and in, in also in, in, in uh, Albania, but that doesn't make me familiar, familiar with, with yeah, their films. Yeah. Not at all. Not at all. No. Okay, since uh, you're a university professor and uh, also a lot of Montenegrin film students are interested uh, to hear uh, things from you, can you, uh, for example, give, a, give them uh, some uh, I do let's say, tips and tricks? On no, good no, no. Well, I do, I do different lectures. I do a lecture, for example, it takes three hours at least on music as a pillar. If you use music, you don't have to. If you use music, make sure it makes sense as a pillar. I do a lecture on script structure, on the track that has to go through a story, on a, a conceptual art, how it is realized, on general film production. I do a very complex lecture on our inner fantasy, which is the basis for most ideas yeah, that, that we have from childhood on. And, and, and so that's what I do. And I worked on them and I, I get a lot of feedback and I change them and I enjoy it. Yeah. Are you willing to learn from students as they are willing to learn from you? Absolutely. Are you still learning? Absolutely. I met students. I know they have so much more talent than I have. It's wonderful. That's the best thing that can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. What and for the end of the conversation, I would like uh, to ask you: What describes a good producer? How do you know that you are a good producer? Uh, that that really depends on with whom you are working. The term executive producer means absolutely nothing in my book. Uh, we 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 had an executive producer on one film we never met. We, we have, it's only a name. We, we never talked to this man. But he had the right to be called executive producer before he sold us a story. So the, it doesn't mean anything. In my case, it means organizing for the director what he needs to have ready to make deals, to get permission, to plan and, and to be reliable and hopefully to win over other people. Uh, yeah, you, 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 as, a, as a producer, a most important part is that you, you can um, convince somebody else to be cooperative. Yeah, I and mean, one of my best stories was to get three tanks from the Belgian army for Full Metal Jacket. Um, it was very, very difficult uh, to find the right tanks for the right period. And uh, so I, I, I found out that in Belgium, in, in Flanders, in Antwerp, there uh, were these three tanks and I spoke to the uh, officer finally who is in charge of these things and uh, I suggested I wanted to hire these tanks and he explained to me that while the Belgian army is very flexible, hiring tanks out to other people is simply not in their books, it's not possible. Well, so we talked about all kinds of things and he finally said, look, just bring them back. <laughs> now, yeah, so uh, I was very proud of this because uh, that, that's exactly what you need to do. You have to uh, try to uh, sometimes to persuade people to be cooperative and give you permission to film at night in front of their house and make sure they don't open the door or get permission from the police or uh, from a mayor uh, in a town to close the city center for a few hours and stuff like this. This is what you have to do. So very often a producer has to be a, a, a persuader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and you make make good deals and, and all that. Yeah. And that's a, a nice that's point for the end of our conversation. Thank you very much okay, for being welcome. our guest. It was okay. a really pleasure talking to you and yeah. I hope to see you sometimes again in Montenegro. Okay. Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. There was me, that is Alex, and my three droogs, that is Pete, Georgie and Dim. And we sat in the Corova milk bar trying to make up our razoo docks what to do with the evening. The Corova milk bar sold milk plus, which is what we were drinking. This would sharpen you up and make you ready for a bit of the old ultra-violence. Hi, hi, hi there, my little droogies. It's a great time, isn't it, Alex? Mm-hmm. He's enterprising, aggressive, young, bold, <laughs> vicious. He'll do. Who on earth could that be? Now it was lovely music that came to my aid. A bit of the old Ludwig van. Pretty well, little brother. Pretty well. <laughs> Stop it, stop it, please, I beg you! Food, all right. Great, sir, great. Try the wine.